In this video series, we usually talk about tanks that are highly debated. Normally, there are two sides. One side believes the tank is amazing, and the other side believes that the tank is garbage. In order to try and find the truth, we take a look at the tank's history. Some tanks really are just bad though. For the M551 Sheridan, I think most people would say that. It's a US light tank from the Cold War, and its reputation isn't great. While it doesn't seem to have any attractive qualities, at least on the surface, I don't think that's entirely fair to say. In niche circumstances, even abysmal tanks can be useful. So while I don't think the Sheridan was an amazing tank, especially initially, I do think it gets a bad rap. So let's get into it. The Sheridan's history starts all the way back in the late 40s, with the development of the M41 Walker Bulldog. Compared to its predecessor, the M24 Chaffee, the Bulldog was supposed to be much more advanced. Stabilizers, autoloaders, and rangefinders were all incorporated on early versions of it. Unfortunately, none of them would end up on the production vehicle. The stabilizers and autoloaders were simply too unreliable, while the rangefinder was dropped to simplify production. The M41 would turn out to be a good tank, even being used fairly effectively in the Vietnam War, but it was a bit awkward. It didn't quite fit the Army's idea of a light tank, being too heavy and short-ranged. In July 1953, three concepts were selected to possibly replace the M41. Eventually, this was narrowed down to just two. The T-71 built by Cadillac, which had a stubby hole in conventional turret, and a T-92 built by AAI, featuring a cleft turret and frontally mounted engine. The T-92 would be more expensive, but it was also more promising and developed, so it was given the contract. Weighing about 16.8 metric tons, it was much lighter than the M41, despite offering about the same protection. Firepower was essentially the same, but it used a novel semi-automatic loader. The cleft turret design was the first of its type, and AAI were quite fond of it, using it on future light tank proposals. The T-92 had quite a few teething issues, but they were relatively easy to fix, and the program seemed to be doing well. But as it typically happens, Congress decided the program wasn't good enough. They had recently become aware of the PT-76, an amphibious Soviet light tank. They wanted to make the T-92 amphibious, but when they were told that simply wasn't feasible, they essentially cancelled the program outright. Specifications for yet another new light tank were created. Not only would it be amphibious, but it would be air deployable as well. The specified weight was around 9 metric tons, but that was a ridiculous expectation, so it was later changed to around 13.6. Overall, the proposals were very similar, though for AAI's vehicle, it only had a 3-man crew. An autoloader wasn't provided either, so that obviously wasn't ideal. Because of that, Cadillac's design was chosen. It was to use the XM81, a novel type of weapon called a gun launcher. It may seem like an odd choice today, but back then, the future of tank weaponry was up in the air. Missiles seemed to be the way forward, but they were still a pretty big gamble. So to not put all their eggs in one basket, the army combined the two. The XM81 could fire missiles, but it could also fire conventional rounds. Sounds great in theory, but in practice not so much. Instead of getting the best of both worlds, they ended up with a disaster. The missile the XM81 used, the Shillelagh, had a slew of problems. They were extremely expensive, finicky, and short-ranged. Instead of conventional steel casings, the XM81 used combustible ones. These were not only very easy to ruin, but they were extremely dangerous as well. After firing, they could leave smoldering residue in the gun breech. So when the next case was loaded, it could cause a premature detonation. This killed multiple crews. When firing the gun, the recoil would often break something on the vehicle, and during Vietnam, the engine could not cope with the heat. It was also a huge pain to maintain. To top it all off, the interior was very cramped. Despite all of these issues, it wasn't seen as a total failure. The M81 was very useful for one thing at least, firing canister rounds. In Vietnam, high explosive rounds weren't seen as extremely effective, but canister rounds were. Plus, by virtue of being a light tank, it could go places that other heavier vehicles couldn't. The army wasn't content to let the program go to waste, so a slew of improvements were introduced. Most of the automotive issues were sorted out, but there was no real way to stop the recoil from breaking things. Later additions include a laser rangefinder and thermal sight, which did improve its effectiveness. Unfortunately, its reputation remained unfavorable, partially because most units never got the improved versions. The Sheridan does have some claims to fame though. In Operation Just Cause, they performed the only combat airdrop done by US tanks. It was also the first US tank to have a laser rangefinder. So while it was pretty bad overall, it's still a pretty notable tank. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.